the discussions have been, from the regulator's point of view, they can regulate anything as long as there's a legislative change. So should Jane Garrett and the Minister of Labor Government look at this in this term, look at changing the legislation and, and allowing raw milk to be uh, consumed, then you know that's that's positive. And the government is aware of the mounting evidence that you know doctors are using it in hospitals in Germany. The Swiss are now study after study is coming out that they're realizing that they need to start, you know, the, the fact that in, in America researchers are requesting funding to find out what it is in raw milk that stops allergies. And then so they can add it to pasteurized milk. And like, I'm really worried that, that, that there is a huge demand for raw milk. There's no doubt about it. The concern is that people that farm conventionally and don't go to all the trouble that dairy farmers that should do, so if you've got an animal that's in a um, raised in in a, a nice environment where it's not stressed, where there's not inflammation in its digestive system because of, it's been fed grains and other uh, refuse from the food industry, but allowed to naturally pasture, all that inflammation will be downregulated. So you're not going to have as many of these pro-inflammatory components that are going to pass from the, the blood and present itself in the milk. So when we're talking about the, the safety of it. Once again, if we're looking at, a, at that, um, animals that are well looked after, um, they're clean, they're healthy, they're happy, uh, that's actually going to lead to a much better quality milk. Also, when we're talking about the safety of raw milk too, if you are looking at cows that are fed on antibiotics and all these other things, that's also going to be able to transfer its way from the blood um, into milk there too. So whether or not people will be drinking um, raw milk from a conventional farm where they may be spraying pesticides and herbicides and things like that, maybe that might not be a very good thing for, or it's definitely not a good thing for people to be consuming. And he said, but the way that you guys are doing it here in Australia is the cheapest way to produce milk. I mean, you know, Tyrone up there, he's got no inputs other than, you know, some, some uh, biodynamic preparation that needs to go into the soil. So it doesn't have to worry about getting fertilizer inputs. You know, you're talking, that's for most farmers, the biggest cost. Whereas, you know, 100 years ago, it was about, okay, we're crop rotating and making sure that, that there's not too much pressure. Is it's not in the public's, in public interest to give us this information. And yet, it was in the public interest, wasn't it, that they took away our raw milk. So this is, this is hypocrisy in the extreme. And I think it looks very much like the beginnings of a cover-up. Also, when you're um, uh, pasteurising, you're also changing the availability of those particular minerals in, in the milk to either be available or not. So they may test them and say, well, there's still calcium, there's still magnesium in it, but it's not necessarily in a, in a bioavailable form that our body can uptake mm. from it. But as far as, you know, most of us knew, it just... It, it, it was killer milk and then it was bittering agent and then it was raw milk was gone. And I think the authorities wanted it to be, or can continue with my analogy, a really short chapter, you know, sort of a, okay, that's done, that was easy. And I don't think they expected people to get organised. Um, and look, you know, at, um, our perspective has very much been that we are in support of a regulated, um, legalised raw milk industry. We believe that the community wants raw milk producers to be able to bring that beautiful, wholesome product to, to, to them and to their communities. Uh, the part of the pasteurisation process actually doesn't filter or take those bacteria out, essentially it just kills them. So during that killing process, those bacteria essentially burst and they release their internal components as well as their outside components. And our immune system is very uh, adapt, or even our not specific immune system, in recognising certain um, markers on those cells. And then what will happen is that the person might be um, drinking the milk that may have had a very high initial bacterial count in it. They, they burst open. The person might drink it. And the non-specific response is inflammation producing mucus trying to get it out of the system. So quite often you'll see people who are drinking milk and they'll go through periods of they can tolerate it, then they can't tolerate it. They can tolerate it, they can't tolerate it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's because there's batch-to-batch -batch variation between the, between the milk and also the different processing and mm -hmm. methods. Mm -hmm. However, intolerances are, are much higher in people consuming pasteurised dairy compared to people consuming raw dairy. Well, uh, milk also has uh, also ha has the has lactase enzyme in it, which mm -hmm. actually naturally helps you degrade. 
the mm. milk. So once again, if you're pasteurizing, you're taking out that capacity. Once again, mm. you, your body, Johnny, mm. it, it's sort of a bit shortchanged in, in mm. that regard. Um, from a protein perspective, when you are applying heat and you're changing the structure of them, uh, sometimes the proteins can be damaged in such a way that they almost become almost like plastic blocks in a way. Consider whether you've got five minutes a week or two hours a week or anything in between to um, put your name down on our contact sheet or on our sheet for getting involved. Um, I'll send you an email with a list of the things that we really need help with, but I, I, we really do want input. Um, and legal, legal support is on that list. Um, it, it, that is really important. And yet we, as human beings, think that we can just chop and change and, and, and heat milk up and then suddenly our bodies are supposed to be able to understand how to consume this stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a couple of generations before we realise that we can't digest this stuff properly or people have allergies or problems with it. And